everyone. So if you wanted to get in on the KDP or CreateSpace craze, but have been a little bit intimidated because you've heard it's kind of complicated, this video is going to help you because we're going to go through the basic steps of uploading your first uh, low content journal to KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. It merged with CreateSpace, so now if you're going to do this, you're going to do it on KDP. And you're going to find that it's really not that bad. So we're going to do it step by step, and I'm going to show you where you can get some um, interiors and some covers that are almost done for you so you can get your first journal up within minutes, really, of watching this video. Now, to get your KDP account, if you don't have one already, there are some instructions on this page. It says if you already have an Amazon account, you're going to go there and sign in with your existing username and password. If you don't, you're going to go to KDP and sign up, and it tells you how to do that. The link is here. You're going to go to kdp.amazon.com, and then here's where you'd sign in. I'm already signed in, so it gives me that option, but if you didn't have an account, you would sign up instead. So once you're signed up, you're going to be on your bookshelf here, and that's where you're going to start a new paperback. So let's click on that, and here's where we're going to start filling out the information for our book. But since we don't have it created yet, I'm going to just leave this page here for the time being, and I'm going to show you how to quickly uh, put together the information that you need to upload this book. So first you have to decide what's going to be on the inside of your book. What's the interior? So I've got a package of KDP interiors and patterns and things that you can use for low content journals and I'm going to use an example from the package so you can see how easy it is to put these together. So I'm going to open this habit tracker. It's a 6 by 9 size, 200 pages. And I'll shrink this down so you can see the whole thing. So it's 200 pages of trackers, and the person would write their habit that they're trying to establish here, like maybe a number of steps they want to walk per day, or that they want to hit 10,000 steps a day, or something like that. So they would write that in here, and then each day that they accomplish that habit, they would color in that the date. And then maybe this one would be... Um, they want to do some stretching every day. So every day they do that, they'd color in the date. And this one could be, uh, you know, household chores or just about anything. So they could use as many pages as they like, depending on how many habits they're trying to establish. And so this PDF has 200 pages that are exactly the same. So you can create these interiors with a variety of software programs. I create mine with InDesign, but that does have a, a little bit more of a learning curve. I'm just familiar with InDesign because I've used it for many years. But maybe you'd want to use uh, Canva or Photoshop or Illustrator, even Microsoft Word or anything that can export or save as a PDF you can use to make these interiors. And of course there's the option of buying the interiors. There are more and more people making these available. Um, this package here that I have is available for purchase and I'll put a link below the video in case you'd like to have some ready-made things you know, ready to go. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what's in it at the end of the video. But anyway, so that's our interior. It's ready to go. And now we need to make a cover. Your cover can be just about anything that you can think of. Maybe you are a Merch by Amazon designer, and so you have a bunch of designs that you've done for Merch. Those can easily be resized and put on low-content journal covers. But to make it super quick and easy, I'm going to just use some of the patterns that are available in this package and show you how quickly you can throw a cover together. I'm going to go down and use this plaid one here. So I'm just going to right click on it and say open with Photoshop. And of course you can uh, create this in any program again that you are comfortable with. So these patterns are sized for a 200 page book in the 6 by 9 size already. But they're pretty close to other sizes like if your book has a different number of pages or if you um, like if you want to go up to 8 by 10 I do have an 8 by 10 version or if you want to go somewhere in between, it's easy enough to stretch these just a little or crop them to fit whatever size book you're doing. How do you know exactly what size to make the covers? Well, I've got Amazon's page bookmarked where you can download a template for that. So that's going to be kdp.amazon.com uh, cover templates. And I'll put this link below the video too so that it's easy for you to find. So I've bookmarked this so that I can easily go back to it. So you select your trim size. In this case, it's going to be 6 by 9 inches. Page count is 200. 
And just a quick word about page count. It's a little confusing. Sometimes people wonder, is that 200 sheets of paper with you know, printing on both sides, or is that 200 pages? Well, our um, interior had, let's open it up again here. It had 200 actual pages of printing. And of course, each sheet of paper is going to have this on one side, and it's going to have this next page on the other side. So 200 pages is 100 sheets of paper. And that's how I think of it so that I can keep it straight in my own mind, the difference between pages and sheets. So here you're going to put the actual number of pages, not the number of sheets of paper, but the actual number of pages that are writable or write onable, if I could coin a phrase. So 200 pages, and then paper color is white or cream, or you can make them color, but that really um, gets expensive fast. So usually white or cream are the choices for the inner color. And then just click download. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder here. And here it is. I'm going to double click that to unzip it. And then inside it has a PDF and a PNG. And then what I usually do is right click on the PNG and open with Photoshop. And this is showing you then where it's going to be trimmed and where the safe area is for your content. So what I'll often do is I'll take this layer in Photoshop and I'm going to drag it to my actual cover design and drop it on there and then move it to the right place. Now I already had the uh, plaid pattern sized properly so that's why this fit exactly. But you could start your design by opening this cover template and then put your pattern or whatever art you have on top of it and then make it fit you know in this space. So I'm going to just change the opacity of this layer so that you can see both. This way you can see through the template and see where your stuff is placed. Right now I'm going to turn it off while we're working on it but we'll use it again in a few minutes. So we need to put our title on here and another thing that's available in this uh, KDP package is, uh, let's go back in here, is cover plates. And there's just seven of them right now. And they're ready-made little, um, I guess they're called cover plates. Maybe you have a different term for it, I'm not sure. But areas where you can put your text so that it's visible, like especially if you're using a pattern such as we are, where text would be a little hard to read. So in this file, each one of these is on a separate layer here in the Layers palette. But let's say we want to use this one here. And this one, I think, is the only one that has two different layers. And you can see if I turn this layer off, the black rectangle outside, it turned off that outside edge. And then the black rectangle inside is that inner area. And I did that so you can manipulate the two separately. So I'm just going to select these two layers by clicking on the first one and holding down Shift, clicking on the second one. And I'm going to just drag those over to my cover file and drop it right on there. So I'm going to move it to the general area where you might put a cover plate and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And then I want to add something to jazz it up a little bit and I'm thinking a flower. I have in Illustrator, I have some flowers that I downloaded from somewhere that were free for commercial use. So I think I'm going to use this one up here. So I'm going to click on it and copy it, go back into Photoshop and paste and I'm not going to get into all the details of how to, you know, copy and paste between the two programs in this video because maybe you're not even using Photoshop and Illustrator, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to paste it as pixels. I'm going to make it smaller, bring it over here. And I think I'm going to make it white. And then I'm going to tilt it a little. Maybe make it a little bit smaller again. And then I think I'm going to make the outline of this cover plate white as well. And so I'm going to choose the black rectangle outside. And I'm going to fill that with white. Now you can see that the inside is partially transparent. If I want to change the opacity of that, I can just go in here. Right now it's at 83%. But I could make it less so that more of the pattern shows through in the back. It's totally up to you how you want to do that. I might leave it right around there. And then let's put some text in there. So let's say we want to call it um, New Habits. 
So I'm going to type in new habits. Make this bigger. And I kind of like that font that it was in from the last thing I did, so I'm going to call that good. Now I'm going to turn this uh, layer back on that had the guidelines, and now I can see that my cover plate and title are way over to the right here. They should be to the left. So I'm going to select those layers. This was my rose, so let me name that layer so I know what it was. So I'm going to select the ones that I have to move, and I'm just going to move it over until it's centered in this area here between the trim lines. So our cover is done. We don't have to do anything else. That can be it if you like. You can put your name and the name of the book on the spine. Um, and if you don't have the name on the cover, you do have to put it on the spine because whatever your title shows in the KDP you know, information, when we start filling that page out, that info has to be on here somewhere. So because we have it on the cover, we don't have to put it on the spine or if you don't feel it necessary to put your name, your brand name or whatever on the spine, you can be done right now. This is, it can be this easy. So let's turn off that guideline layer. And we're just gonna save this as a PDF. So I'm gonna go into Photoshop and save, and I'm gonna call it um, New Habits Cover. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop and save it. Okay, so we've done our interior and we've done our cover. So now we're gonna go back into KDP and fill out the book information. And it is a little bit more involved than, for instance, um, uploading a shirt to Merch by Amazon, but it's really not too bad, especially once you get used to it. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Don't be too intimidated. So our book title is gonna be New Habits, and then you have a space for subtitle. And the subtitle is going to be placed after your title. They're going to put a colon here and then your subtitle um, on Amazon when your book is listed. So they don't want you filling your title or subtitle with a bunch of keywords, at least not in a way that is spammy. They have a space down here for other keywords on the back end. So for the subtitle, I would just briefly explain what it is. So I'm going to call this um, Habit Tracker Coloring Pages. I'm going to put um, 200 pages, three new habits per page, and six by nine. And I think you're allowed to put all that stuff in the subtitle. Don't quote me on that. We'll see if it goes through. But I like to have you know the crucial information easy for them to find. I've seen some that are listed where I have to really search to find what size the thing is. And of course, the size is listed in the information, you know, automatically based on what size you uploaded. But I like to make it easier to find, so we'll see if this works. But anyway, continuing on, um, if this is a series, you would put the information there, or if you had an edition number, not an issue here. Um, your author name, even if it's not on the book, you can put it here. So I'm just going to put my name. If you had other contributors, they would go here. Now here's where you would put a basic description, and I did write one up briefly for this purpose. I'm going to copy it and paste it in there. So basically, you're going to just explain a little bit more about what it's for. I'm explaining that it's 200 pages. It's a prompt journal for tracking new, habit, new habits. Each page has three trackers for three habits, and it gives some examples there so they know what you're talking about and then explains too how it could be used sort of as a coloring book. Each day that you perform the habit, you can color in the dates at the end of the day. You can make this quite a bit longer. They allow close to, what is it, 4,000 characters. So there's a lot more you could put in there, but this is just a, a, a start for you. Now here you're gonna click, I own the copyright and hold necessary publishing rights, unless it's something that you got from the public domain. Now here's where you're gonna put those keywords. And so, I have some um, basic words here that you might use for this kind of thing. Tracker, journal, notebook, logbook, prompt book. So we're going to incorporate those words into these keywords. So what I might do is, first of all, just put habit tracker. And then I might put something a little different like habit tracking journal to include the word journal. And then since people might use this for a New Year's resolution, I'm going to put New Year's resolution 
uh, journal. Then I'm going to put um, new habits notebook, maybe just habit log book. I'm trying to think of other words I could use for habit. Maybe we could say like goal tracking, and then we're going to use another one of our terms over there, prompt book, and then maybe goal journaling or something like that. Now, again, I'm not saying these are ideal keywords or anything. I'm not a keyword expert, but this is sort of the way you could do it. Just come up with as many different terms that relate as possible. Again, without making them spammy or trying to fill each one with a dozen words, just use two, three, four words maybe in each one. And since KDP is kind of new to me, you know, that's why I don't want to say do this exactly the way I'm doing it. I started on Create Space. It was a little bit different, and I don't want to steer you wrong on KDP, but this is just what I've learned and what's been working so far. So take that as you will. So now we're going to choose our categories. And for this, um, it's nonfiction for sure. I think there's a self help category. Yep, self help. And then it could be like motivational and inspirational, but that's not quite right. Maybe personal growth. Yeah, I'm thinking per <laughs> personal. Personal growth success might be a good category for this. And then the other, for journals, I'll often go to literary collections and diaries and journals. But that isn't necessary. You could maybe find a second category like this one that would be better. But if you can't, just use diaries and journals and then say save. And then adult content, no. And save and continue. Okay, so here we're going to um, get a free KDP ISBN. We just have to click that. and that one again. It's been assigned. Continue publication date. You can put a date, but if you don't, it'll just put whatever date this becomes live on Amazon. So usually I just leave that blank. Now you're going to choose your print options. We already decided it was going to be a black and white interior with white paper. Trim size is six by nine. Now for bleed settings, in this case, we're going to choose bleed and I'm going to go back to this interior so you can see why. If you notice these, um, the background here of the page, the gray bars, they go all the way to the edge of the page. This interior was created a little bit larger than 6x9 so that when they trim it to 6x9, these gray bars will still extend to the very edge of the page. So if you don't have anything that extends past the, you know, the margin that KDP recommends, then you can choose no bleed. But for these, we will choose bleed. And again, that's something that if it's a little confusing, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to explain it a little bit better. But it's just a little bit beyond the scope of this particular video. So anyway, we're going to choose bleed. And then we're going to choose the cover finish, whether it's matte or glossy. I think for something like this, that's going to get handled a lot. Um, matte tends to show fingerprints more, so I'm going to choose glossy. So now here's where we're going to upload the interior that we just looked at. Uh, they call it a manuscript. So, so that was Habit Tracker 6x9 200. Open and it will upload. It takes just a minute. And then we upload our cover. Now you can use the cover creator and create a cover right within KDP, or you can upload a cover that we already have. So we made one. We're just going to upload that. And I had put that on the desktop as well. New Habits Cover. This takes a little bit longer. Okay, our cover uploaded successfully, and now we're going to launch the previewer and see how it looks. And this will take a few minutes, so I'll skip ahead in the video so you don't have to sit here and wait with me. It will give you several different um, messages here as it's doing it, telling you what it's doing, but it can take several minutes. So it's good to go and just do something else while it's working. Okay, that took quite a while, it, maybe seven or eight minutes, something like that. So in that sense, it definitely does take longer to upload to KDP than other PODs. But if you know that and you just go and do something else while it's uploading, it's really not an issue. Um, you can work on your next cover, your next interior 
just get a bunch lined up, ready to go, work on your keywords, your descriptions, or whatever. It's not a big deal. So anyway, this is the print previewer. And now we can check and make sure that everything looks good. Our pattern extends out beyond these lines here, and that's the way it should be. That's the bleed I was talking about. If you hover over the white line, the pop-up says this line represents where the book will be cut to create the final trim size. So that's where they're going to cut it. And then the red line is the safe area. So anything important, text and graphics, must be inside this line. Anything outside the line may be cut off. So this is the trim line, but just to be extra safe, make sure everything is within this red line. If you had your name or the name of the book on the spine, it would appear here. We don't. Um, they put the ISBN and the barcode on the back cover automatically. You could put anything you like on the back cover, you know, when we originally created it. Um, I usually leave it blank for this kind of thing, but you certainly could put something there if you like. As I look at this now, I realize I did forget. I was going to put a drop shadow on this rose so that there's like a little more black behind it and would stand out a little more. Um, so that's something I forgot to do. And you can re-upload a cover if you forget something. Not a problem. So I won't take the time to do that now, but just know that this is the purpose of this, is seeing whether there's something you've forgotten, something that doesn't look right, whatever needs to be changed. Sometimes seeing it like this is when it really hits you. So now if you click here, you can see your interior. And of course, this is the back side of the cover, so to speak, so there's not going to be anything there. Page one is here, and then you can keep going, and now all the page spreads are going to look like this. Obviously, you don't have to go through and check that all 200 are good because they're exactly the same. So just take a look and, and see if it's how you like it. And again, you can see where it's going to be trimmed. This way, the gray areas here are going to go right to the edge of the page. So anything that you want to go right to the edge of the page, you have to use a bleed because otherwise they can't print right to the edge. They have to print it a little bit larger and trim it off. So if you like the way it looks and everything you know looks good, all you would do is click on Approve here. If you want to change something, like I want to go back and change uh, this rose, you would just exit the Print Previewer. You'd go back down here. I would fix it, and then I would just re-upload the cover file. You can just click on this again, upload the fixed file, and then launch the Previewer again, and then you would approve. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to approve this. Um, just so that we can go to the next step. So you're going to go to the bottom of the page here. It shows what your printing cost for that's going to be. It's going to be $3.25. So that's the base price that you have to pay Amazon, although it's taken out before you get your money. So you don't have to worry about that, but just so you know, that's your cost. We're going to say Save and Continue. And on the next page here, you're going to choose where you want to distribute. Choose All Territories. And here's where you choose your price. Because your price is three, uh, 325, they're telling you that you have to price it at least 542. For something like this, I normally will put um, like 799, 899, 999, but there are people who price a lot higher than that as well. So um, kind of just have to test it and see how it works. Let's say if I put 899, it's going to tell me what my royalty is. Now obviously 214 plus 325 does not equal 899, so there's other costs in there, but basically you can expect to make a couple dollars as a royalty on each book when you price them under 10 like this, and I like to do that because these are kind of impulse buys, they're the kind of thing that someone might add to a cart just to reach a free shipping threshold, or it's something that they might buy multiples of because it's pretty cheap, so it can add up fast, so I wouldn't be scared away by that lower royalty. You can click on Expanded Distribution, which puts you in other marketplaces. The royalty is going to be often a lot less in others. If you click on the uh, other marketplaces here, you can see where else it can go, and you can adjust these if you like. I just usually leave them as they are. And then you scroll down here. Um, you understand that it can take up to three days for them to review it, but it's usually quite a bit faster than that. It's faster than it was with CreateSpace, at least in my experience. Um, it's often the next day. So by clicking Publish, I confirm that I agree to and am in compliance with the KDP, term, KDP terms and conditions, which I encourage you to read as with any POD. 
And then before you publish, if you like, you can request a proof copy of this book, which they'll put it in your Amazon cart. Now, I think it's about three bucks plus shipping to get that, but that's the cheapest way for you to get a physical copy to check out. The thing is, they put a, a band across the front that says, I think it says something like um, proof copy, not for resale. So it's kind of ruined as far as being a nice copy of the book to keep. But if your purpose is just to check it out and make sure it looks okay in person, well, then that is the cheapest way to get a copy. Otherwise, you can just order it, you know, through your regular link once it's up there. So if you're ready at that point to publish the book, then it will go into review. They'll take a look at it, make sure everything looks good. If you're not, just save as draft, and you can always go back in and publish it later. So that's all there is to it. It really isn't too bad once you get used to it, like I said. And it's especially quick when you do have some pre-made um, interiors uh, and or covers ready for you. So I was just going to take a couple minutes and show you what is in this package in case you're interested in trying it out with some ready-made interiors. The package has five different interiors. I'll show you the dream pages. Now this is for dream journaling where you write down uh, your dreams and your interpretations of them. That's something that's fairly popular people like to do. We've got the habit tracker I showed you. Then we've got kindness pages, which is tracking acts of kindness that you do for other people and that you view other people doing. Then we've got uh, recipe pages. So this is great for writing in your recipes. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see the whole page. All the relevant info that you might want to have in a recipe book. And so you can make a cover for this with any kind of um, food pictures or graphics that you've created or that you've put together. There's just no end to the possibilities. You could make a journal that's specifically for uh, maybe vegetarians or uh, a keto journal or any sort of diet. Um, you have to be careful, of course, with your keywords and stuff, unless they're generic terms. But you could theme your recipe journal in just about any way you like. And then we have another journal for walking and sleep and water intake. Because those are some things that people that, who are health conscious do like to track. It has a place for the dates. You can rate how you feel, a weekly average. And so that's kind of a cool one too. So those are the interiors. Like I said, they come in 100 pages, 200 pages, and then they come in 6x9 or 8x10. So there's four files for each one, except for the steps, sips, and sleep, because in this one, each page fits a full week. So 104 pages makes uh, two years worth of journaling. So there's no sense making that one a lot bigger, although you certainly could do so. If you have Acrobat, you can add pages to this. So then we have 20 different patterns here, that, like the plaid one that we used. Each of those also come in 6x9 and 8x10. I'll just show you a few examples. There's one, um, maybe the ferns. These are different patterns that I made uh, out of some pictures that I had. And that one's kind of an optical illusion. Anyway, you can see a picture of all the patterns. If you check the link below the video, it's going to be a Gumroad link, and that will show you a picture of all the patterns. And then as I showed you, the cover plates file has seven different cover plates for you to use that you can put your title on, and you can change the opacity of these. And this is a TIFF file. You can open it in any raster program. You don't have to have Photoshop in order to use this. And that, of course, is the situation with the patterns, too. They're PNG files. They're not specific to Photoshop, so you don't have to have Adobe products to use this package. So, like I said, if you want to give this a try and you want to have most of the work done for you to start with, just to, to get going, click on the Gumroad link below the video and check them out. And um, you might find that doing journals on KDP becomes one of your favorite things. It really has for me. I, I enjoy that even more than I do making shirts. So give it a shot and let me know in the comments how it goes. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I don't have a regular schedule for putting up videos, but I'm trying to put them up more often and talk about a variety of different tools and things that you can use in your POD business to expand and make yourself some extra revenue streams. 
So have fun and thanks for watching.